We want to be, we want to be going. We need to go. Head to this many times. Like here, that they're trying to push up onto that attic again, and we've got the crossfire on. We're, we're leaving ourselves up into a pinch here. So this player should have definitely died for this. Okay, guys, we're back. We're a bit rusty around the edges, but we're back with a coaching video. This is an e a video that was sent in through email. Um, this is a 1600 Onyx Strongholds game where the player themselves are 1600. Let's get right into this. We've got some beefy sounds coming through. Just going to deal with that. Okay, so I like how we're sort of taking the, the back side. One of the things we need to keep careful of in Strongholds is we want to be looking at where the enemy team is going to spawn and using that to inform where we're going to be pushing on the map. So by taking A and B, we're basically giving the other team C. So we might see a C counter cap at some point soon. See some shots coming in from C, you can hear them. Player C is not doing anything yet. We get B. And now if we look at the setup that we've got, we've got elevator, we've got B. Enemy team is going to be spawning in C. This is a really good time to get a setup. Going up onto the attic is a good call and holding top glass so we can get some crossfire. So he's waiting for the enemy team to walk across and attempt to take A. And here you can see they're coming across right now. If you're in a situation where a team does this to you, then the way to break a setup is to hard push one side of the setup. Preferably this side, you probably want to you probably want to push the glass side and try and get a push into gold after getting a pick. And that's what they've done here. You can see that they've hard pushed one side with two or three players. They took out his teammate and then they tried to push up. And luckily for them, um, the player who submit this video had a commando and he took them out. But that's how you would start to break setups. And we can do more longer videos on that if that's what people would like. So let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. We're sort of just waiting out here because one of the common things that tends to happen at Diamond and Onyx is people like to flank. And you can see here that the player is just kind of watching for a flank action to come through, again, to try and break that setup. And you really want to be paying attention to the momentum in a match purely based on the amount of players that are on the map. So if you're Platinum or Diamond, you really want to start thinking about how many people are on the map and how does that affect what I now can and cannot do. See this player spending a lot of time up in the attic area, definitely try getting that cover across to control, forcing the enemy team to just spawn in C. Now, you don't have to go for the BA setup, you could go for the BC setup if you wanted, um, but it's just you have to commit to the setup as a team, and that's exactly what this team of random players is doing. You can see from the nameplates in the game that none of these guys are in the same fire team, guy gets completely caught out. Um, if you're wondering why some of the shots look a bit weird, I should have said this is actually in theatre. Um, so if there's any shenanigans that are going on, or if it looks like he's playing on LAN, he isn't, he's playing on theatre. And look at how effective this crossfire is. We are going to spend probably a lot of time here, and I'll edit it out so we don't see this too much, but look how strong this setup is. The other team cannot do anything. And in Strongholds, one of the things that's really underutilised is the fact that you don't have to run around the map like a headless chicken to win the game. And this is a very good example of that. They've lost Attic now though, so this is going to leave the enemy team to take B. Are they going to Are they going to try and take the middle of the map here? So here, here would be a key point, and let's go into shot call for this. So if you're holding the side of the map over here, sort of like this, you got a player maybe over here, you got someone who's holding the stronghold here, and they had a guy in the glass over here. Then what the enemy team did is they sent three players this way. And what this does is it actually puts a lot of pressure on this side of the map over here because this player cannot cannot really shoot through if they push up to the glass. And once you get the pick, you have the numbers game. And if we just try to, try to plan ahead a little bit here, if this player in glass dies, then where they'll respawn is actually over here, which starts to see you can push. You can see that the front that this team has is slowly starting to push back towards A. And that's, how, that's what you need to think about when you're breaking setups. As we said with Halo before, this is a game of chess. It's not a game of, of drafts. There's certain things that have to fall into place for certain other things to then happen. So if you push the stronghold back, uh, if you push the team back, and you start to take this area, then what you're actually starting to do now is block spawns in that area as well. And the team, the red team, should have pushed very hard over to this side as much as they could and take and be because again it would force it would force the blue team to lose map control and move back and as well as this if the blue team tries to move over the pistol spawn uh, into control they have to move through the line of fire of red team through control just as we saw the player who submit this video to do that so when you're trying to break um the setups push one side really hard try to get a pick once you get the pick push up to stop spawns um, so you don't get any squad spawns during the fight. And then once you've slayed, and only after once you've slayed, hashtag slay first, 
Then you take the stronghold. Let's carry on. Picking up the nice double kill there. Big denial on them taking that B stronghold. I like how he played, even though that he didn't need to get the kill there, just playing the stronghold, stopping them, buying time was good. You can see that his team has already taken the initiative. The initiative of Onyx players or high diamond players is to be in the right place at the right time. And you can see that his team are holding that mid map, that B point, very hard. Focusing one side, this time they're hard focusing onto the control side. Oh, they were hard focusing onto the control side. And you can see here that they're trying to push up onto that attic again. And we've got the crossfire on catwalk this time. But as we saw, as we went back, they're pushing. So they almost did a little bait and switch. You want to hard push one side, cause a commotion, push push somewhere that's weak in the setup. And the weak part in the setup is the guy on his own. That's a cat in this instance. So you can push from either side. But it's all about timing and pacing. If his teammates had not been there at that time, that would not have worked because he would have been ready and looking at control to anticipate a push. So we've got a sizable lead here, but the yellow team's starting to get... So they, they forced us to spawn back in C. Taking C here by this player was probably a little bit of a mistake. He wanted to wait until his team had spawned up a bit. Because it gives the enemy team then time to act on the information that you've given them. And we're, we're leaving ourselves open to a pinch here. So, And that was a good move again. So let's move over to Shot Call just to show how to counter pinches. So if you want to counter a pinch, if you just look at what I've got on Shot Call here... You can see that there's two players from the blue team in the C in the C area, and there's one person in control, and there's two uh, people from the red team coming from long haul. So what a lot of people tend to do is they tend to sort of try and back up and then fight it out, but that's not actually what you want to do. If you realize that you're being pinched, then as soon as that happens, you need to push one side, and you need to figure out very quickly which side that's the weak side is. In this instance, only one player had shown in control, and we haven't actually seen the rest of the video yet, so we don't know where his team is, if it was a four-man push. But the correct play here was to push straight through into control. So as these players wrap around, these players have already left. And you can see from the video that we've just watched that that's what just happened. So again, this is the decision-making that you see in higher-ranked games. And if this is something that you're not doing, if you're getting flanked a lot and you're getting pinched a lot, you want to be being more proactive in countering that pinch. It's like in League of Legends and other games, split pushing or pinching is a very, very effective tactic. But the one big weakness of it is that it, because you're dividing your resources to two fronts, it means that one front can easily be crushed if the enemy coordinates it to it. So just bear that in mind. These guys must have got crossfired. That was a really good... Really good uh, denial of trying to get the triple cap there. So their aggression, their, their wanting to push for the triple cap there, literally just lost them that fight. And potentially gets our friend here A. Mm. They sent two guys over. That was well played by them. Okay, we're probably going to spawn back in C here if we've been locked in properly. Long haul. Yeah, they're stood in about the right position. So again, now, you can see that the enemy team's set up. So what we've seen here is that the player is really good at holding the setup, but they're not very good at breaking the setup. And breaking setups when you're not coordinated or in a pre-made is difficult. So again, let's go to Shot Call for the third and probably final time for this game. So if we just build the setup that is uh, common on this map again, we can try to talk about things that you can do to counter it. So this setup here would force your team probably to spawn in the long haul area, or in the hydro or C area. Um, and so there's a couple of options that you have. And, and again, these options are all core to timing. So if your allies are going to push up control like this. And push out onto the bridge. You need to make sure that the player who is here cannot shoot across the map. And stop your, your friends, your allies from pushing over to A. Conversely, another way that you could do this is you send one player onto the onto there and then you push up this way very aggressively using long haul up into glass and then doing a jump up using the stairs to push trippy underneath the downside to this push is that the player here is very open and so the timing between player one and players two and three needs to be very very tight so that player four doesn't end up getting railed from two different directions this is just a few ways that you can they can break this setup. 
A final way that you could break this setup is to try to move through pit up the stairs and take bottom A. And then again, as this player is fighting, this player then has limited cover because this player has to go and help A. So when that happens, this guy may be throwing his life into a 2v1, but then these players are then free to take the 3v2 and potentially slay out and get B. So it's that idea again of divide. If the, if the enemy team is trying to set up on you, divide and conquer. Don't let them realize what you're trying to do. Don't let them realize that you're trying to split push them. Get the timing down. Watch your teammate across. Even if you're not coordinated, you don't have to say it. Just watch and wait. Yeah, in strongholds, we always want to push. We always want to be like, oh my God, we're losing points. But sometimes it's just better to wait. Shooting the disruptor. That got nerfed, I believe. And now we're putting pressure on. We're almost reversing what's happening to the team. They're taking C. Doesn't matter. They're losing map control for it. So we've got A spawn and we've just spawned in gold. So breaking the set, getting rid of that guy on glass is core. This is the person who must die. So the point in that fight we knew we were going to lose, if we look here, we've announced our presence to that player and then we just look away. I'm not sure that I fully agree with that decision. I know you're trying to give cover to your teammates. And this guy, so throwing the nade there, like even if the nade hits him, like yeah, you're pinning him down, but if he runs around the corner now, you're locked in an animation. And unluckily for you, he did come around the corner when you threw the nade, so it sucks to be you. And then if we just slow it down. So as soon as you miss that shot there, as soon as you miss that shot there, like you're, you're in one shot here and he isn't. He's still flickering and you're not. So at that point, you know, here, I would have realized, hang on a minute, I have the height advantage, but actually this isn't going my way. I would have dipped. I would have dipped. And plus you are very open on bat ledge as well. And if anyone, if they were pre-made and they called you, you were just dead. And we've, we've seen, you know, three separate fights by your team. Now, three people down. If this other team's good, they'll block spawns and they'll force you to spawn in C. Hmm, they push C a little too hard and a little too early. So you spawn really close to this guy. This is a big kill. That is a very big kill on breaking that setup. Let's see what happens from here. The enemy team pushing into C too early for the purple team spawners made it so we spawned in long haul and now the map again is in disarray. There's no setup that's happening from either team. We're just kind of running at each other. Hey, we're out in the open here. We need to get back. We knew that someone was down here. We shouldn't be challenging this when we're low. We're too keen to help teammates and chal. If your teammate jumps into pit, you need to let him make that bad decision if you're half shields. If you're full shields, help him. But if you're half or a quarter shields, you don't you don't help him in that scenario. What the other team's doing here that's causing you to lose is they're just frantically flying at you and because you're not pre-made or because you're not communicating in the game potentially, you're not dealing with it very well. I mean, the overall gunplay and stuff from this play is good. They're clearly a good player. There's just some little mistakes. But it's a team game as well, so it's not just this player either. Using the cover well. That guy mega over-challenged. Don't do that. There was two players. He had no business being in there like that. He should have left. Okay, now we're getting a stranglehold. We're getting it. Right, now we need to push around to gold. We need to get the gold control. So let's move around. Help this teammate. Move quick. We know someone's just gone up to gold. We need to get gold. I like this position, waiting for them to spawn in C. So you, the player has got awareness of spawn locations. Almost. Try and aim a little bit in front. Still a little aiming class. So when something like this happens, Let's slow it way down. So you want to see, like, you right-sticked there. So we right-sticked to adjust, but it was too much. So what you want to be doing here is you want to be moving the reticle to, like, here. What you're trying to do is you're trying to track him as he's going through the air, and you're trying to flick to it. And I guess that kind of works if you've got a good aim for it. And it's a lot easier on mouse and keyboard. 
but you want to be aiming in front of the target and you want to let the target move into it and through it. And then that almost makes it a reaction time game rather than a, like an actual manual dexterity game. Oh, you kind of do it. But then you adjust. You, you, you should have... So you adjusted this way, but actually, as the target's traveling like this, you should have actually adjusted this way to give yourself more time. Because he can't move. When he's in the air, all this guy can do is, is spin. That's all he can do. So you actually did make the adjustment. Um, again, if you want to see that in slow motion, if I do that, the annotations, see there. We've got the manual adjustment right there. So we get the manual adjustment, and because of the manual adjustment, we actually missed. So it's it. there's this inbuilt thing where you want to correct, but sometimes you have to correct in front of the target, not to it. Uh, that was a really good example of that. Killed him anyway. So we got the setup once again. Had a camo noise around B. Where is this guy? Trying to be sneaky. Drop. So dropping down from the power position there was a really big mistake. So as soon as you took that power position, like when you're up here, you have a get out. The get out card exists and you should take it if you need it. But as soon as this guy started taking B, you did the right thing. You started looking and you're like, oh, it must be the camo guy because we just heard camo. So we've got a frag grenade. Why do we not throw a frag here? And we're looking still. Do you think you've not realized it was the camo? So what you're actually thinking is that it's the guy, he's below you. You've not realized it's the camo player. And then here when he throws the nade, you've now dropped down. So where, where are you going now? Like, where can you go that is now safe? And unfortunately, the answer is nowhere. This is this is a death trap. There's like a spawn here that 343 seems to not remove either. I hate it. Batteries is a death trap. You don't enter it unless you've slayed first. This player should have definitely died for this. His teammate just comes to save him, so he dies. They, they did the hard push, so once again, we've we've spoken loads about the um, the split pushes and the breaking of the setups, and they did hard push glass again, so this team is good at breaking setups by hard pushing one side after they get a pick. We know we've spawned in here, so they must be long haul side. We want to be you, we want to be going. We need to go. Yeah, hanging around just wasting nades. We either go or we back off. Nice little curb slice. Open to bridge. You're open to bridge. Again, a little, just a little positioning error from this player again. And I, I think it's the panic of how close the game is. So we get, we curb slide, we look, but then the line of sight from here, from this door. The line of sight from this door is like anywhere in this zone. So like, if you're gonna fight anyone who's in this area, you need to stand there. Because if you stand, you stood here, and I think you got charged at by someone from that way. So you just got to be careful. Another skill in Onyx and High Diamond is the is isolation of multiple angles. And I've died to this many times. Like I have walked mid whirlpool and just got obliterated. You need to make sure you're not doing that. Which is a very like elementary mistake. You get killed for it. Even if you don't know if someone's there, you still shouldn't expose yourself to it. You only do that if you have absolute information and in this case in, in a in a 4v4 pug you don't have that information so you don't do it if you're playing in hcs with a pre-made 4 it's a little different and we just get picked up off the spawn there we are holding though we are holding okay we've spawned up in the gold so that means they're at a and c and they're taking c that sneaky on the dorito there but unfortunately for him that guy Right there. That guy right there, I think if he held fire, did he see him? He didn't actually... Oh, he did see him. He saw him. So he was he was trying to trigger discipline. He should have just been a bit higher up, man. Like, just stand up there instead. If that guy... If this player was stood up there, these two players wouldn't have seen him. So ha holding the Doritos, like, not bad, but sometimes it's better just to hold heaven instead. And then they both die for it. I think that's lost them the game. I think that player right there, I mean, there's a lot of things that's happened in this game, but I think this player, these players right here, this is what loses the other team the game. I think, I think the player who sent this video is about to win just because of that. Because these, these guys are good at holding setups.
Right, we've got 10 points left until we win. The camo no longer matters. It's going to take more time to get the camo than it is to win. They have camo, though. So we want to play defensively. Look at them. They're just throwing themselves. Desperation. Throwing themselves into a corner. And there we go. Hold it. Do we get a scoreboard at the end? No, we don't get a scoreboard at the end. So so this was a nice little return to form. This was an Onyx Strongholds game. 1600-ish. Um, and key things that we can take away from this is, firstly, understand what a setup is and how to break it. So that's the idea of either split pushing or using timing and pacing to your advantage. Number two, understand how to counter a split push or a pinch. You do that by hard pushing one side because the enemy has dedicated their resources to two different sides. So if you dedicate all your resources to one, you will have more. You should win. Um, and then finally, it's the idea again of like angle isolation. Like even in even in like the Onyx 1600s, we are still making errors with where we stand, and we're still making errors with where can I be shot from if I stand in this position. You should always be asking yourself, can I take this angle from further back? and not open myself up to other angles and the answer is usually yeah like the answer is genuinely usually yes but you have to look for it and you'll find that if you watch hcs a lot of the pro players will have these angles and you just need to pick up where they are so that was the coaching video for today uh 25 minutes not not bad for length but there you go and um, i hope you enjoyed it uh, as always streaming on a wednesday um, VOD review on the stream and then guys uploaded on a Monday and then we have these usual videos on Friday plenty of stuff to come uh, we got season 4 coming on the 20th of June we got lots of news until then we got bits and bobs coming out and maybe some other stuff that I've got in the works uh, but we'll keep that under wraps for now so if you enjoyed the video make sure you leave a like feel free to subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this but in the meantime guys this has been Vanadam and I'll see you later see you in the next one